Hello and welcome to Split Amount into Monthly Columns. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Hey, let's just jump right in. What we're trying to build is this dynamic report that helps us um, take a single amount like this and spread it into monthly columns like these. But we want it to be really dynamic. Meaning, if I want to change the report window, like maybe it should start at 6 1 20, 30, then I want all these columns to update accordingly. And if I only want to view it for six months, I want all the formulas to update accordingly. Maybe three months, maybe 12 months, six months. Maybe I want to start at 1 1 20, 30. That's fine. And maybe that's three months, okay, 12 months. So you get the idea. So I want to be able to change the, like, the report window, and I want the formulas just to kind of calculate uh, based on what is currently displayed. So let's build all this stuff together. I'm going to go ahead and clear all these formulas out. And the first function we need to understand is EO month. It's been around for a long time. If you haven't had the opportunity to check it out, it's pretty cool. It calculates the end of month, which means the last day of a month. So I'm going to go with EO month. The first argument is the start date. That's just the date that we want to start, comma, and then the number of months to offset. Offset meanings, you know, move it forward or back. So if I do zero, it means the current month. So if I hit enter, this should show January 31st. Let's hit enter. Okay, based on this formatting, that's not displayed. So let me just change the cell formatting to this, and we can see that's January 31st. If I wanted to roll it at forward, I would use a positive number. That goes to 228. Two months ahead is March. I can also go backwards. I could go back, you know, 12 months. That's fine. Um, but you get the idea. So we're going to start with zero, meaning current period. But we want this to dynamically adjust itself and to take as many columns as needed based on the number of months the user wants to display. So to do that, we need to change this months argument and we need to make it more sophisticated. So what we need to do is we need to get help from the sequence function. And if you haven't had an opportunity to check out the sequence function, basically what it does is it creates a numerical sequence based on the argument values. So in our case, how many rows do we want? We just want one row. How many columns do we want? Well, we really want the number of columns that the user entered here, right? Comma, what's the starting value? If we leave it out, it'll start at one. Since we're using this with EO month, we actually want it to start at zero. And then the step value, so that would be we want to increment by 2, by 10, by negative 5. If we leave it out, it's going to go with 1, which is perfect for our case. So I'll just hit enter. And now we get the sequence function generating the, the dynamic number of columns needed. If we change this to 3 or 6 or 9, it works uh, like we want. So all we need to do is I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to replace this argument with our sequence function. And we hit enter. And now let me delete all this stuff and let's just see if this works. So here we have three months starting at January. That looks good. Maybe we want to start it at uh, April. And that looks good. Six months, good. Nine months, good. And I think we got it. <laughs> that goes out 152 columns. Let's just go with 12. Okay, very good. Okay. Now, the next formula we need to write is the one that's going to compute the subscription values into these monthly columns. So let's just break it down. What are we trying to do logically? Logically, what we are trying to really do is we're trying to see if this column label falls between the subscription start and end dates. And we don't have an end date displayed because we can actually calculate it. But if we wanted to display it temporar temporarily, uh, let's just go with um, subscription ends. And let's go with the EO month function. And we want to start here. And we want to go for this many months. Close the function, enter. Let me change this formatting so I can see what it is. And this is going one month too far, right? Because zero is the starting one. So actually, let's just subtract one month. There we go. And let's fill this down and just kind of confirm. So this is one for 12 months. That looks good. This is three for six months. That's good. Good. Okay, so all these look good. Um, 
I'm just temporarily computing this so it makes the formula easier to understand, and then we'll ultimately substitute this EO month function for our, for our formula. So the first test is, is this column label after the start date? In other words, is the start date less than this column label? So we can do that with a simple comparison you know, expression, which is, is this date less than or equal to this column label? And we could hit enter. And now we could manually fill this right. Um, and then we're going to get some problems here because I didn't do absolute and relative cell references properly. Um, but there's a better way. And we're just going to dynamically compute these so that they expand and collapse as, as needed based on the number of months. The way that we do that is instead of referencing G11, we actually want to reference that entire spill range. So to do that, we're going to use the spill operator, which is the hash or pound. We hit enter. And now this is going to automatically and dynamically expand or collapse. So we go 3, 6, 12, looking good. Now I know I'm going to fill this formula down, and so I want G11 to always reference that, that row. So I'm just going to insert some dollar signs. And now let's fill this formula down and let's see what we got. This should, if this worked, it should accurately calculate the date that we're going to start, but we haven't talked about the end date yet. So if I'm just looking at the start period, this one should start in January, which it does. This one should start in March, which it does. This one should start in April, which it does, and March, and yes. Okay, So we've got the start piece figured out. Now let's compute the end piece. And basically, we want to now see if this column label is less than or equal to the subscription end date. And both conditions have to be true. So that means I'm going to use a multiplication operator. In other words, let me go ahead and throw some parens in here. And I'm going to multiply that by the next expression, which is, is this, and once again, I'm going to lock it down. Once again, I'm going to refer to the spill reference operator, is less than or equal to my subscription end date. And let's hit Enter. And now we notice that this is converted from true to one, and that's a result of the multiplication. And that's exactly what we want here. So let's just kind of first compare these, these results and make sure that they look good. This one should start at January for 12 months. That looks good. This one should start at, month, at March for six months. So March for one, two, three, four, five, six, and then stops. That looks good. April for three, April for three, and March for six, March for six looks good, okay? Now, we want to basically um, apply or compute the monthly amount for all the, the ones, and otherwise it should be zero. So since these are ones and zeros, they're set up exactly the way that we, we want or that we need, and all we really need to do is compute the monthly amount. So I'm just going to go multiply that by the monthly amount. The monthly amount is sales divided by number of months. Close this function and enter. And let's fill this formula down. And I think we got it. Let's see. Three, OK, looks good. Six, nine. Um, if we want to start on June 1st, 2030, and go for three months, I think we've got it. So we can totally dynamically control the window that's displayed, and the, the calculations just fall in line, as we would hope. Now, to clean this up, uh, there's a couple things we want to do. First, let's remove this subscription end. If we wanted to leave it, we could, and that'd be fine. And in fact, another you know, helper column we, we could do is put um, uh, like total recognize. And here, we could just do sum of, of this whole range close the function, and we could convert this to a numeric format. And that would be able to show us that you know, the wholesale has been recognized within this, this report window. So we could add that helper column if we want. Um, but I also want to remove this helper column. And so to do that, I'm just going to take the, the calculation. I'm just going to copy it, and I'm going to just put it in here. And so instead of referring to F12, I'm just going to paste this in and hit Enter. Now I should be able to fill this down. And let's take this out 
and let's just kind of confirm that it works here. Um, so let's say we want to start at 4 1 20, 30 and go for nine months. That looks good. And three months looks good. Let's start on January 1st, 2030. And these look good. Six months. Yeah, I think we look good. And if I wanted to clean up this formatting, I would select this entire row and do a format. I'm going to go with a custom format. I'll go with three M's to get the three letter abbreviation and then four Y's to get the four digit year. And then I think we got it. Okay, cool. All right. Hey, hopefully this helps. Thanks. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 